Have you ever wondered why even though you've got a good education, you're maybe not earning as much as you'd like? Well, I did some digging and found out why the richest people in the world aren't always the most educated and what we can do to copy them. But in order to understand the relationship between wealth and education, I need to show you why school is setting you up for failure. Let's look at the reward model for schools. The standard story is that you want to earn good money and in order to do that, you need to get a good job and in order to get a good job, you need good grades. And to get good grades, you need to do well at school. Now this system has two massive fundamental flaws which both set people up for financial failure and they continue to keep them earning less than they actually could do. A long time ago, when I was a student at university, I lived with a guy called Chris who was, uh, and I'll put this mildly, really weird. I swear this story is true. He had zero life skills and absolutely no common sense. I went to university a little bit later than the majority of my friends, so I was like a year or two older than most students. And by this point, I'd already like lived alone, I'd paid rent, got a job, but I had no idea just how naive and unpractical some people could be. Chris was a really bad cook, so like a lot of students, he would order takeaways, me included, uh, however, the one time that he would cook himself a meal is with a ready-made oven pizza. And I remember Crystal clearly one time sitting at the kitchen table watching him place the frozen pizza straight onto the oven rack with no pizza tray. And I was like, well, that's a bit strange, but not the end of the world. And maybe he even knows something that I don't. And when the timer went off, he turned to me and he said, this is the worst bit. This is why I hate cooking cooking and he opened the oven only to try and take the burning hot pizza from the oven rack with no gloves or no oven towel. Just his bare hands <laughs> touching hot metal and a scalding pizza base and he would literally yelp in pain as he removed the pizza from the oven. My jaw was completely open watching this moron university student remove like a 220 degrees celsius pizza from an oven barehanded and then then he would put the pizza on the table, again, no plate or anything, and he'd dive straight in. And anyone who has eaten pizza straight from the oven knows how like, the roof of your mouth is singed to a crisp by the cheese if you don't let the pizza cool down for a little bit. Now what's really upsetting here is that this wasn't the first time that Chris had done this. He told me that this exact experience is why he doesn't like cooking, which suggests that he'd done it multiple times. In this scenario, Chris is your average school student and his method for cooking pizza is our school system. Yes, technically he was getting pizza at the end of the ordeal, but at what cost? He's also a brilliant example of how academia does not translate into real world application. If you saw Chris doing this over and over, you would most likely explain to him the benefits of an oven tray and an oven glove and that he could let the pizza cool down a little bit before he had to eat it. So why do we insist that the way our education system is set up currently should stay as it is purely because it's how we've always done it? If you're an employee, there is absolutely no guarantee that a degree plus a load of debt will land you a great job. And even if you do get a good job, there's zero guarantee that your job is secure. Between us, Olivia and I have been made redundant five times. And if you're a business business owner, school grades absolutely do not translate into business acumen. I think one of the reasons that most business owners get extremely frustrated with how little they're earning is because they believe that they've followed the rules and they're not being rewarded for their efforts. I know many employees feel that they've done like all of the work and they've followed the rules, they've done everything right, so why do they still feel like they're under so much financial pressure? The real world values things that people one, fast food, convenience, sex, but school teaches us that the world values grades. So we spend our time getting really good at skills like memorization, academia, and theory 
in order to get those grades. But both the skills we've learned and the grades we've achieved are almost useless once you get past higher education. If you think about the things that you're stressed about right now, money, morality, mortality, productivity, that kind of stuff, maybe your family, or work, these things aren't fixed with academia, they're fixed with an entirely different mindset. We come out of school thinking that we just need to keep our heads down and do the work and we'll be rewarded, but it simply doesn't work like that. So what if we want to change that? Coming up, I wanna talk about how to fix your income problem, how to get out of the education trap, and when education really does matter. Imagine trying to win a swimming competition when your coach is someone who's never actually swam themselves, but had only studied the theory of swimming from like books and stuff. They have access to the rules of the competition, but they have zero access to strategy from learned mistakes and successes. Last year, I took some fin swimming lessons, you know, like, you know, swimming fins, to help with my free diving. And what I found myself struggling with was staying underwater for as long as possible, while also completing as many lengths as I could underwater. Now because I knew the theoretical rules of free diving, I just kept diving down and staying underwater and I would kick super hard and try to reach the other side of the pool as fast as possible and I thought that in order to get better I needed to work on my kick and speed and strength. That was playing by the rules as set out in the theory. However, my coach would be able to swim length after length after length underwater. Plus, he looked effortless cruising under the surface. And when he'd come up, he'd be able to hold a conversation, whereas I'd be like desperately gasping for air, trying not to puke. And what he told me was that I was fighting the nature of the water. The rules of free diving are for people, not for the water. He showed me how even though I had the strength and the speed, I was struggling against the nature of the water and no matter how hard I tried, I'd never like beat the water. The water is never gonna get tired. So instead, he told me to dive down to just above the bottom of the pool and then calmly and slowly kick both legs at the same time, kind of like a dolphin. And I couldn't believe the difference. I could start to do length after length underwater on one breath hold. Plus, I was actually faster than ever and I was using less energy than before and what had become a kind of regular habit of trying to like hold down vomit as I exhausted myself and swallowed too much pool water became an effortless and stress-free exercise in relaxation and breath holding. You see Max, my swimming coach, he knew that if you swim along the very bottom there's this kind of weird natural phenomena where your body kind of like sticks to the floor of the pool because you're using less energy staying underwater you're free to take your time with your kicking. A nice, slow, hydrodynamic posture and kick meant that I'd glide through the water better and because I was relaxed, I was using less oxygen or I'd actually be creating less CO2. Education is like the rules of free diving. Rules are for people, not for water. Water is the real world where you can fight and you can battle against it, but it will not relent. So instead, when we apply real world strategy to to our money and to our finance, we change how we interact with it and it becomes less stressful and easier to understand. So how do you get out of the education trap? Well, we need to see how the real world and how education don't line up and where they do. And the first place to start is looking at what they don't teach you at school, which is how money works. My mother uh, was an English teacher, she's retired now, and she loves reading, uh, certainly where I got my love of reading from, and she believes that the ability to write a compelling essay is fundamental to education and even becoming a well-rounded person. And I believe that writing used to be a critical skill, a bit like mental arithmetic and learning how to speak Latin, but with the rise of AI and large language models and like machine learning tools, a bit like chat GPT, the way we write needs to change. And I'll talk a little bit later about the value of learning stuff like mental maths and how it does hold value. But 
we're placing massive value on a skill which is rapidly becoming outdated. Now, of course, she disagrees, but she's also from the school of thought that taught us you won't ever walk around with a calculator in your pocket and look what we all carry in our pockets now. Education moves on, and if we want our schools to produce happy, productive members of society, our topics need to change and move on also. Now, unless, of course, it's not in the schools or the government's interest to have free-thinking members of society. And the more reliance you have on your employer, who does understand more about money and finance, the less power you have. Now, the short tinfoil hat wearing answer is that schools want to produce conforming employees, not free thinkers and innovators. Corporations and governments want people to rely on them for financial advice and practice in order to keep people where they are. Now, I know this sounds like deep state and borderline conspiracy level nonsense, but the evidence is pretty clear. As soon as large companies with money wanted more developers and coders, governments spent billions bringing coding into schools and relatively quickly. So we know they can change curriculums based on the demands of the market. But that only affects large companies. There is zero incentive for schools to teach kids how money works so they can be financially free. Plus, as soon as you explain to people how much university costs and that it hardly guarantees income security or income at all, all of a sudden it doesn't sound like such a good investment. Imagine educating people on buying a house, taking on massive debt with a lifetime mortgage, which can actually go up in cost as time goes on, and then telling them, well, sometimes you're not even really able to use your house just kind of because. That's what university debt is. And of, and of course, universities don't want people to realize just how fragile their degrees are. So they don't want people learning that there could be other options out there. So what can we do now? What if you're already in the trap? It's actually pretty simple simple, learn about money. If you are unhappy with how much money you make now, stop believing that money follows education because it doesn't. Money follows two things, speed and desire. If you can help someone get what they desire, that's what attracts money. And if you can help someone get what they desire faster than their other options, that's what attracts more money. I understand that a lot of this can sound very cynical or reductive, maybe even upsetting. You're essentially learning that years of education aren't necessarily adding to your income. Education should be rewarded, but it's not. Your ability to help people get what they want is rewarded. If you're an employee and if you want to earn more, stop focusing on your credentials, your training and your experience. Yes, I said experience. In my opinion, experience is worth almost nothing from what I've seen. Most people who say they have 10 years experience doing something, what they really mean is they have one year of experience and they've done it 10 times. Years ago, I headed to London for my first proper sort of course corporate sales job, and I was by far the least educated person in the room. In fact, I remember one guy scoffing when I told him my degree level and my experience. I think he actually said something like I, he even felt bad for me because everyone else sort of in the room was invited from another agency to join this interview. Every other applicant had probably a master's degree and they even had like experience working for an agency doing something similar. And during the interview, I was asked why they should hire me. And my answer was extremely simple. I had a list of 10 potential leads from a large car hire place that I used to work for previously. And all of a sudden, my 2-2 degree from Solent University and my lack of direct experience didn't matter nearly as much. I remember handing the list over to the hiring manager who also happened to be like the sales manager and told him on this list is 10 people who are expecting a call from him or like his team for the software that they sold. I started the job the very next week. And if you're a business owner, your experience and awards and best practices don't mean a thing without giving people something that they fundamentally want. The education trap for businesses is constantly learning the best methods or doing things correctly. And again, that's trying to measure your value based on other people's arbitrary numbers. How code should only have a certain 
certain like load limit or file size, maybe how design works and how people should interact with a page and what makes it look good. More often than not, these sort of capricious standards are often set by other experts and we only adhere to them to impress our peers, not our customers. Now I'm guilty of this. I recently learned that I had built a multi six figure coaching business on the basis of impressing other coaches and not what I wanted or what my customers wanted. School teaches us that failure is death and we should avoid it at all times. But the real world requires failure over and over in order to make progress. We're afraid to fail in front of our customers trying to figure out what they want. So we take the easier path and try to impress people by meeting their known standards. The only problem is that those known standards have no connection to our ultimate goal of financial freedom. I'm not the best marketer in the world. Hell, I'm not even the best marketer in my own company, but I make way more money from selling books and creating content content. I sell people what they want, not what they need. Look, I'll be the first to admit that I don't want my oncologist or heart surgeon kind of like making it up as they go along. I want my civil engineer to learn from industry experts and tried and tested methods. Education holds an extremely valuable place in the world for many careers. But in those cases, we're often measuring the success of them differently, like people's health and people's safety. If we're measuring pure income and financial freedom, our current education model just doesn't cut it. So where is education extremely important? There is absolutely no denying that education is vital both to the individual and to larger society. There is clear evidence that countries with higher education rates have lower teenage pregnancy, have increased average life expectancy, and yes, there is actually a correlation between income and education as a very general general rule, the more educated you are, the higher your income. However, it is also the case that your average debt level is also significantly higher. Now, yes, some of that, of course, comes down to university fees and education based debt. But there's almost certainly a link between the networking opportunities afforded to those who can pay for college and university and the level of income they manage to secure on average. Having said that, there's also clear evidence that the amount of savings that the average person has is decreasing. For example, 40% of Americans have less than $1,000 in savings. The link I'm trying to separate is between income and financial security. It's simply not as clear as we thought, let alone the link between education and financial security. Learning mental arithmetic is important. There's evidence that learning maths like that and other skills helps to develop brain functions and memory. And of course, there is also the route that some people don't want to earn lots of money. Maybe they want to learn all the time and become academics and have papers published to which I applaud them. It's not for me, but it takes different strokes for different folks. What makes us different is what makes the world a more interesting place to live in. Studying history is extremely important, as is geography and maths and science and art. It's not all about the money. It shouldn't be all about the money. The wide variety of things that our children can learn is what makes school so engaging sometimes. But it is a critical failure of our states and schools when the children we're raising aren't able to have a secure financial life which doesn't require intellect or academic intelligence. Perfectly normal, non-academic, visual thinkers should be given access to financial education alongside every other subject subject, especially if it's going to affect them for the rest of their life. I'm also not saying that tools like ChatGPT are better than professional writers. I'm not saying that ChatGPT is so good that kids needn't learn how to write because a tool can do it for them. What I'm saying is that tools like GPT will become so prevalent in our phones and our laptops that learning how to use them effectively is more important than refusing to acknowledge them the same way that we need to teach kids about online safety, money, and personal finance, and that dance from Fortnite that I can never seem to do like that. 
<laughs> it's also true, however, that while writers and people who understand writing might be against some aspects of the tools like ChatGPT, this is another example of why education and experience can't compete against fast and easy and convenient. Look, while it's dreadful to think about, the vast majority of the population will be absolutely fine with machine learning based algorithmic content churned out to hit that sweet spot of it's fine enough to watch like reality tv and fast food that is where the money will go the thing is now that you've figured out that you need to change what you're offering in the world you need to work out what that thing even is like how are you going to help people if you do want to earn more money and charge higher prices you need to learn how to sell what people really want and charge for that service. So if you go ahead and watch this video, you can see how I made more than $20,000 as fast as I could.